I want to do another update on Russian military operations in Ukraine. Today is July 2nd, 2022. But this is about uh, a U.S. Department of Defense senior defense official briefing from July 1st, 2022. So I kind of wanted to go over some of the main points that jumped out at me. Uh, the link to this briefing will be in the video description below so you can read the whole thing yourself. It's a very short briefing and then a, a much longer question and answer session with, with members of the Western media. Uh, so it's titled, Senior Defense Official Holds a Background Briefing July 1st, 2022. They talk about the retreat, they call it a retreat, uh, by Russia from Snake Island. And they said it was the result of Harpoon anti-ship missiles. That's what finally did it. And this senior defense official says, it does make it a lot easier to defend Odessa and in the future to be able to open up those sea lanes without Russia controlling Snake Island. But again, this is absolutely not true. If you can see how small Snake Island is and, and realize that Russia didn't put anything there on that island to actually help it control the sea or, or to aid in operations in the area. As a matter of fact, operations in the area were often being carried out to protect the Russian garrison on Snake Island. It was uh, laborious, dangerous, and costly to hold Snake Island. It was done mostly for political reasons. And now that Russia is, uh, you know, they, they have these victories in the Donbas region, they could, you know, pass this off finally, once and for all, uh, get the garrison out of there. And uh, by the way, Ukraine is in no rush to go there themselves because they'll have the exact same problem. Uh, so again, why, why is the Pentagon making up lies about this? It's because they have no good news to tell. So they have to make up good news and they have to depict this as a retreat by Russia and some sort of major strategic victory for, for Ukraine, even though it isn't. Now, the briefing goes on to talk about the situation in the Donbas region. And I, in my last update, I showed the maps, several Donetsk completely taken by Russia. Now, Lizzie Chance, according to Russian sources, as I'm recording this, they have Lizzie Chance completely surrounded. And even according to this Pentagon briefing from July 1st, Russian forces were already inside the city. So this is what the Pentagon is saying about the Donbas. Everyone's watching the fighting in the Donbas very closely. It is still this grinding war of attrition. And you know, since Ukraine conducted the managed retrograde, man so Russia retreated from Snake Island, Ukraine, they're just managing retrogrades everywhere, all across Ukraine. Uh, so since Ukraine conducted the managed retrograde that we spoke about last week from Severodonetsk, now all eyes are on Lizzie Chansk and you know, we are seeing Russia, you know, claiming, claiming dominance. But I will tell you there is active fighting in the town and fighting particularly around the oil refinery. And I think this is another one of these examples where we see Russia paying such a high price for tiny bits of gains in terms of territory. And that is the case today in Lizzie Chance. These, these, it's not bits of land. These, these Several Donetsk and Lizzie Chats combined have a population of almost 200,000 in the surrounding areas, well over 200,000. It's an industrial center, it is an urban center, it is also the last bit of Lugansk Oblast that's what remained for Russia to take control of. Now they have it, now they're going to have it. So what is this? This is the Pentagon, this is the Pentagon engaging in pure war propaganda. They're, they're going to inflate non-gains by Ukraine, like Ukraine did not set foot on Snake Island. They did not take Snake Island. Russia simply left. Nobody wants to be on it because of how difficult it is to defend and how little you gain by doing so. Meanwhile, they're going to try to diminish the significance of Russian advances in the Donbas region. I, I guess that's what we should expect from the Pentagon. I guess we, we shouldn't expect objectivity but this is, this is very blatant, it's, it's very obvious. Uh, I mean, because they're doing this all in one briefing, inf inflating the, the situation around Snake Island and 
you know, that was a Russian retreat, a strategic victory for Ukraine. And this is a managed retrograde by Ukraine out, out of all of Donbass, really. I mean, that's, that's where this is all headed. And, and they keep talking about Russia paying for its advances. And they never qualify that. And I'm, I'm going to show you how in this briefing, journalists ask the senior defense official to qualify that. What do you mean are they paying uh, a heavy price? What does that mean? And they're not able to qualify because it is just war propaganda. And you have to keep in mind that whatever losses Russia is having as they advance in the Donbas region, Ukraine is suffering uh, many times more losses in terms of men, equipment, and obviously territory. That's what losing is. It's losing more than the enemy is and falling back losing men, losing equipment, losing territory until you have nothing else to lose and then you've lost entirely. The Pentagon is also talking about uh, these four HIMARS systems that they sent to Ukraine. So uh, they say they're on the battlefield, they're using them. They're using them with a good deal of success in, in the middle of their managed retrogrades. They're using these HIMARS with uh, a good deal of success and they claim that they're even hitting command post. And I haven't heard about this at all. I follow Ukraine, pro-Ukrainian sources. When I show the map in my updates, it's always the pro-Ukrainian, very pro-Ukrainian liveuamap.com. I've not heard about command centers being hit by HIMARS. I haven't heard of it. And again, they, they never go into that in the, in the briefing. They never provide any evidence of that. They also say, in regards to the additional weapons the U.S. will be sending in yet another package, aid package. We're also providing for additional counter artillery radars, also very useful for this fight in artillery fight. But the item that's new that I wanted to draw your attention to is two NASAMS, NASAMS systems. So this is NASAMS stands for National Advanced Surface to Air Missile Systems. And this was a system that was co-produced with Norway. Uh, now, these counter battery radars that they're sending Ukraine, the, the problem is Russia also has these. They have them in greater abundance. They also have many times more artillery guns. It's an artillery battle. The radar allows you to see where the enemy fired from and to direct artillery fire uh, at that location and destroy that artillery. So the, the problem is you're sending systems to Ukraine. They have never used these systems before, so that's one problem. The other problem is quantity. You're not sending enough of them to make any difference on the battlefield. They're still heavily outgunned. So you send them radars, they can see where Russia is shooting from, but you don't have enough guns to respond. So what is that? that that's, not, that's not helping them. Now, in regards to this air defense system, uh, it's never been used in combat before, not that I know of. Uh, its capabilities appear to be a very serious downgrade in terms of range and capabilities versus the S-300s Ukraine st started this conflict out with in late February. Ukraine had S-300 systems. This is a very formidable Soviet Russian anti-air system. It's one of the best in the world. It has a very long range compared to what, what the U.S. is sending as a replacement. So it's better than nothing. But this is what they're replacing the S-300 system with. It, it even says that here, the, the Pentagon, the senior defense official says, Ukrainians are doing a magnificent job of employing their existing air defense systems. But we all know that a Soviet type system means that it's Russian made. And so over time, it'll be harder to sustain with the spare parts. So that's why we want to make sure that they have access to modern air defense systems. Uh, they, they use this word modern like uh, it's a huge upgrade for them when in fact it's a downgrade. The shorter range, fewer capabilities, not battle tested. And, it's, and, and then in addition to all of that, it is a system that U Ukrainians have not used before. So they will be unfamiliar with it on top of the, the, the performance of this system. The other point here is that Russia is already being careful when it's in Ukrainian airspace, uh, ironically because of the Soviet Russian made air defense systems that Ukraine has, S-300s and, and several other systems uh, that, you know, cover a, a wide range of capabilities. They've already adapted to this. 
and they have already formulated a strategy that is winning on the battlefield. So uh, downgrading Ukraine from S-300s to this, this new untested system, uh, that's not going to help Ukraine. It's better than nothing, but just barely. I, I wanna point this out. I pointed this out many times before. I wanna continue pointing it out. This is CSIS. Uh, it's a think tank. It's a US government and Western arms industry funded think tank. Uh, just to give you an idea of, you know, where they're coming from. And this is their missile defense project. And it's an article titled Russian Air and Missile Defense. And it says, uh, during the Cold War, Soviet Union invested heavily in its air defense systems. As a result, Russia now possesses some of the most advanced air and missile defense systems in the world. This is the U.S. saying this, Western experts admitting this. And if you read through that article and you read other articles uh, as part of the CSIS missile defense project, you will see just how formidable Russian air defense systems are. They're layered, they're networked, they're extremely capable, they're battle tested. Uh, this is what Russia invested in instead of uh, air superiority in the way that the US and its allies invested. So let's get back to the briefing and uh, the question and answer session. One of the questions was asking the senior defense official to qualify what they mean by Russia paying a, a heavy price for taking this territory in the Donbas. And the senior defense official says, with the Russians, I mean, we are seeing them certainly expend significant ammunition and take significant casualties, but I'm afraid I don't have specific numbers for you because it's propaganda. It's just something that they're saying. They're not going to talk about how Ukraine, whatever Russia is losing, Ukraine is losing many times more, which is the reason they're getting pushed back on the battlefield. Uh, this is Western propaganda and you know, the Western media is asking a senior defense official, and then after that, they're all gonna go back to their office and write an article. So this is the kernel of the war propaganda we see spreading all across the Western media. There was another question about the HIMARS, and they were asking about, you know, they're on the battlefield, so why, why do we not see them making any difference? And so this is, this is what the senior defense official says. The system has just recently been introduced. So the Ukrainians are still very much in the early days of operating this system, which means they're not using it effectively. This is what I said would happen. Uh, they, they didn't get enough training on it. it. Takes four weeks to train an entry-level operator, but you don't just use entry-level operators to run a high Mars battery. You have to have a wide variety of personnel, many of them with years of experience, uh, and then there's all of these support elements that you need for it to function effectively. The US just gave them these launchers. And to my knowledge, uh, they don't have all of this support personnel in place specifically for the HIMARS system. So they're, they're saying they're using them, but uh, they're still trying to get the hang of it, I guess. Another question asked about these artillery radars that I was just talking about. And uh, this is what the senior defense official says. I could just tell you that from my conversations with Ministry of Defense officials, they have said that they are they are working very well on the battlefield and that we are seeing, again, we are seeing the Ukrainians use these capabilities with great proficiency uh, and enhance their artillery operations. And again, Ukraine is losing. They're being pushed off the battlefield absolutely everywhere. There's nowhere they're gaining ground. They're losing hundreds of men uh, a day. They're losing huge amounts of equipment. As they withdraw, they're leaving huge piles of equipment behind, being taken by the Russians and their allies. And so what, what does working very well mean? What does that mean? Does that mean they're using them properly, but it's just not making any difference because it was too little, too late? I, I think that's probably what it is. This is what I've been saying for weeks now in regards to this, this aid that the West is providing Ukraine. Another question uh, calls the Pentagon out on uh, claiming that Russia is paying this heavy price for taking several Donetsk and Lizzie Chansk. And they said, you said that the Russians were paying a high price for tiny bits of gain. Uh, which side is paying the higher price, Russia for its tiny bits of gain or Ukraine for its delaying action? I think, think we all know the answer to that question. But let's see how the Pentagon official answers. They say, 
I think that this is a really tricky question because there's so much that goes into that question of what cost the country is paying. When you look at, you know, Ukraine, I would never minimize the cost of losing, you know, losing any territory or the cost of these absolutely horrific civilian casualties that we are seeing. Not to mention, of course, the cost uh, of the Ukrainian armed forces lives. But when you look at Russia, you also have to look at the, you know, the cost to the to the Russian soldiers and families, the cost to the Russian equipment. We also should look at the cost to the country and the country's reputation in the world. The Russian advances have resulted in steep economic sanctions, isolation from the world, not, not really, and that it is not letting up as long as Russia continues these advances. So in that sense, it's an extremely high price that Russia is paying. You notice they didn't answer the question at all. It's a very long-winded way of uh, not only not answering the question, but it's admitting that you don't actually really know what, what the price is that Russia is paying. You don't have any numbers to provide, or maybe you do, and, and they just don't add up to, to make the point that you're trying to make. And because they didn't really answer the question, there was a follow-up, and it says, well, how about just on the battlefield? Who's paying the higher battlefield price for this territory? And so the senior defense official says, you know, I don't have any specific figures on both sides if that's what you're asking. So it's just war propaganda. So that was the Pentagon briefing for July 1st, 2022. As you can see, it's, you know, these small amounts of weapons being sent, uh, barely enough to replace the, the weapons that they just sent for the last aid package. Uh, in, in some cases, it's even less than that. These are weapon systems. In the case of the air defense systems, they are actually a downgrade to what Ukraine started this conflict out with. The S-300 is by far superior to this new system that they're sending to Ukraine. I, again, it's better than nothing, but just barely. Uh, and again, Russia has already uh, adapted to the fact that Ukraine has air defenses and they're still winning and that's not going to change. So again, this is the Pentagon trying to pretend that this is going much better than it actually is. Uh, they have to point to non-events like you, Russia withdrawing from Snake Island. They have to inflate the importance of that and minimize the importance of Russia taking entire cities. That's not a big deal, but Snake Island somehow was. We'll continue keeping an eye on all of this. It seems pretty obvious what direction this is all going, but we'll still follow it very closely. I'll do another update in a couple of days unless something major happens. Uh, and until then, if you thought the video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing to my channel. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. Check the video description below, especially if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, for where else you can find and follow my work. I'm on Telegram. I update that several times a day. I'm also on Odyssey and Rumble. All of my videos are automatically backed up there just in case YouTube deletes my channel. In the video description below, you will see the link to uh, both the Pentagon briefing as well as that, CI, uh, that CSIS missile defense project article. Also in the video description below are ways you can help support my work. You can do that through Buy Me A Coffee, through Patreon, and also through PayPal, but PayPal is becoming very, very unreliable for, for a multitude of reasons. So please only use PayPal if you have absolutely no other choice. And to everyone who has been helping out, whether it's month to month, whether it's one-time donations, or even if you're just helping share my work with others just to get the word out there, I greatly appreciate that. I could not do this work without that support. So thank you, and as always, thank you for watching.